I'm very happy with the way God of War 2 came out. Provided we hit our, our mark, I was pretty confident that our sales would be better than God of War 1, but I was rather skeptical that our reviews would be. God of War 2, I think, at the end of the day, probably equaled, if not slightly exceeded the first, which I was not expecting, and it was quite satisfying. I can't believe I'm fucking doing this. I deserve this one, then. <laughs> this is the final chapter. So I think big goals for me are to finish this off in such a grand, epic fashion. Something that is truly befitting of what we've done, what we've set up in one and two. All right, this is where we've been for it. God of War 2 ended up being everything we ever hoped it would be and, and probably a bit more. It got reviewed very well. I honestly feel like it was probably about as good a game as uh, it's likely to be made on the PS2, and I'm very proud that, that we managed to do that. In once you start something, you gotta finish it. So that's the way I look at things. God of War 3 is gonna be the conclusion to the story. My hope is to make the best effects I can in the last one. When I think of God of War, I think of the best action platformer out there right now. I think other games and other companies look at us and go, how are they doing it? How can we make it like them? And that's rad, because I've totally been at the company where we looked at that game and went, man, how do we do that, you know? My main hope is that it escapes the destiny of sequels as well as God of War 2 has escaped the destiny of sequels. I'm going to be satisfied if we tie it all up and we can kind of close the book. We're past the stage of figuring out what we want to do. We're now in the early phases of sorting out the how we're going to do it. Next Friday will be my last day at Sony Santa Monica. The bomb was dropped. It was somber and everyone was quiet and no one said anything and perhaps there was a tad bit of shock. It just killed me because I, re I really didn't want to say something but it's just nothing you can say is going to come across as anything but you're an asshole. When I heard that Corey was going to leave was uh, kind of annoyance more than anything. It's, you know, it takes a long time to make a successful team as much as a successful product. It's always a pain when a key person in that team decides to move on. First emotion we felt was just shock. Didn't, didn't see it coming, didn't expect it. It's like dropping a bomb. Well, it was disbelief, obviously. I thought he would be the last one to leave. Incredibly bummed out, like very, very disappointed. <laughs> you know, you're never really prepared for something like that, <laughs> you know? Uh, they don't warn you very well either. They just kind of spring it on you. It was kind of a bit of a shock. I, I never expected that Corey would leave the project. So, but uh, once once the initial shock died down, I, I couldn't help but being a little bit happy for him. So because he was getting to try new things. It kind of puts us in a little bit of turmoil for now. But I think we'll we'll work it out. I'm glad he has the balls to stick to whatever it is that he wants. But I'm also a little pissed that he's leaving us in the lurch, just kind of like holding the bag. I mean, I know I want to be here. If he needs to be someplace else, that's what he's got to do. Um, and I think it's better that it happened at this stage in the project than a year from now, obviously. It obviously is a very difficult choice and a difficult time and, and not a very happy choice to be making. But, you know, on the horizon, the, the doors are opening. Of course, it's, it's hard to imagine someone stepping into Corey's shoes. He's, he's amazing. Many people wondered whether we could do God of War 2 without David Jaffe, who did God of War 1, and I think we succeeded at that. Um, I think we can succeed at creating a third version without Corey Barlock. I think it's kind of neat, actually. A different director for each chapter.
have uh, chosen Stig Asmussen to take the helm. When I became director, there was a very warm response from the team. I got a lot of uh, tons of support, and I mean, so far, everybody's been super cool. I look back on how Corey handled things and how Dave handled things, and I draw inspiration. I think the most important thing that I got from both of those guys is the fact that they were themselves. I'm super excited about this. You know, this team kicks ass, you know, and it's said a lot, but this type of situation, the kind of garbage that we've been going through in the last month, as far as I'm concerned, this team's second enough. But Stig is fucking amazing. Stig's a pretty good leader, I think mostly because you're probably afraid of him when you first meet him. The entire team really respects him. Everybody communicates well with him, and he's not unfair with his any of his decision makings. From my perspective, he is uh, much, much more easier to work with. He is much more structured and engineer friendly. One of my strengths is to try to lead by example. Hopefully that, that filters through to the rest of the team and they're able to approach their tasks with total excellence. All those leads from the last game, those key people, they're in place. And that's really where the personality of the studio comes from. That's where the drive of the team comes from, wanting to critique every element and make everything that's in the game the best that it can be. It really is driven from the leads and from the culture of this studio. And that has not changed, even through the turnover. So working on the PS3 is very, very challenging. It's uh, a lot of new technology and a lot of new techniques are required to make a game on the PS3, which means that we have to learn some completely new techniques for writing our game code. It's also a completely new graphics processor, so we have to learn about those graphics techniques and work out how we expose them to the artists in order to make the best possible art and give the game the look that the art team is interested in. We have a similar set of problems working with the designers. People's expectations for games on the PS3 are much higher. They want to see, you know, more enemies and more complicated effects and you know more uh, ragdoll physics on the characters and you know realistic looking reactions when you hit people so yeah there's a tremendous amount of challenge working on the ps3 god of war 2 the team was able to throw so many things into the game and get things up and running and finding out is that fun or not the hard transition for god of war 3 is getting all that to work again because we have so much new technology that has to be built you know what i'm saying Everybody has to relearn their own personal expectations and their limitations and how they're projecting their schedules and their tasks and things like that. Everybody is counted on everybody else to kind of make accurate predictions on what, what they can do. It's tough right now because everything's new. It's so much more involved. That's very worrisome. When are we gonna get to the point where we can say something's gonna take four weeks to do and it's really gonna take four weeks to do? It's understandable that nobody understands that right now. PlayStation 3, we're able to push a lot more polygons, a lot more texture resolution and detail, so things are hyper-realistic. I mean, they're, they're so realistic now that we can actually see pores on skin and, and hair and eyebrows and nose hairs. You can see everything. We have a lot of work ahead of us. Every character now is like taking six weeks, eight yeah, weeks. At least six weeks. Yeah, to make one. It's not like before, it's like five days we can make one. For me, it's, it's not knowing kind of where the limits are. You can make stuff look so super realistic now, and that takes a lot of time. Whereas before, we really had defined limits. Yeah, it's exponentially more complex. And the other big thing is, this is gonna be our first PlayStation 3 game, and we're expected to be able to beat games that some studios have released two, three, even four. Gamers are expecting us to have better technology, better art, better visuals, better gameplay. Across the board, they expect it to be better. And that's pretty intimidating in itself. We're going crazy with the detail. When it's done, I think it's going to look incredible. You're going to see Kratos do a lot more subtle movement, more facial animation, things that the human eye just you know, usually takes for granted. But now we can include all those things. The things that we can actually accomplish are starting to now really become things that are only limited by our imagination. With the new hardware and the new system, we're able to kind of start pushing the player experience and creating like a much more kind of cohesive world and like you know the titan before used to be in a cinematic and like and now you're actually like running on the damn thing so it's like you know whoa you know we're we're getting there titans we've never done anything yeah. like that they're pretty crazy it's insane uh, the fact that you're going to be able to run around this like moving character and it's basically a moving level it's pretty insane from a 
a programming perspective, mm. they're a big challenge. We designed all of our animation systems and everything to deal with a roughly two meter high character. Exactly. Where, you know, if, if his little finger twitches slightly, there's <laughs> you know, it's not too much of a big deal. Exactly. But when, when your character's yes. like, you know, two kilometers high, then yes. a little twitch in the finger suddenly becomes like a really big deal. The very first moment those were mentioned, I was like, oh, Jesus, this is going to be a big problem. <laughs> yes. But hey, I mean, it yes. wouldn't be God of War if we didn't try something we couldn't exactly. didn't think we could do when we started. Because I'm very proud of this game and you guys, I've invited a storyteller friend of mine to come in our walkabout. So uh, Stan Lee is going to join us today and uh, check out your work. This is such a cool time to be just walking around the studio and looking at things as they're coming online. Every month, you know, we do a walkabout and it's largely for the team to kind of, you know, review each other's work and, you know, and, and really compliment each other. It's a big studio now, there's like 80 people here and really it's impossible to keep on top of everything that, that any given part of the group has been working on. It's an opportunity for everyone to see what cool stuff has been, been going on in the studio. It's a good way of making everyone realize that they're part of a big machine at this point. Plus everything looks better uh, after you had a couple beers, <laughs> so it helps It helps to uh, make your stuff look better. Bad, everyone's out to get uh, These are all... So Olympus, the gods, and they're all bad. All the gods are bad, oh, except this guy who's tormented. Yes. That's he's great. His, his line is, in the end, there will only be chaos. Ooh. <laughs> and then the next game you do is called Chaos. That's a great sequel. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Zeus's brother, Poseidon. Terrific. Terrific drawings. Hera. Yeah. I love to write dialogue. Maybe we could try something new. A video game with lots of dialogue. I'm sure it would sell like a bomb. <laughs> <laughs> and I love the way this hand is there. Oh, gosh. Oh, yeah, and then when he moves the hand, we'll yeah. like, make that to kind of get destroyed a little bit and get all kinds of dust flying off of it. This is one of the best things I've ever seen. Cool. That is beautiful. before you left. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so long, fellas. Uh, we're just giving each other props here. Yeah, yeah. Cheers. <laughs> There's no such thing as a bad walkabout. Because, you know, beer at work. And also, Stanley rules! Woo-woo! It's Stanley! Stanley! I'm fine with it as long as we make it seem like it's in game as much as possible. I'm still learning every single day, and I imagine that it's, that process won't ever end. And there's so many things that you can learn from every individual on this team. Stig is kind of man of the team. You know, very easygoing, very casual, but he's also extremely intelligent, very thoughtful. I think the thing that's been successful for him is that people just want to help him out. They just want to make a good game. Stig just keeps pushing along. He's got two brand new twins at home, and yeah, it just keeps on he's going. He's got this other baby, this big baby, on his back right now, so he's doing great. Since last Halloween, we made a lot of progress. We've got the story of the game done. We've got the, the whole design direction completed. Three months from now, you know, we're going to be doing our press event. Everyone gets to go home early! The first couple times when Stig addressed the team, it was so clear how nervous he was. He would kind of stumble on his words, and he'd literally, you know, turn red, you know, like a, like a stoplight. It was really kind of endearing. But then to watch him sort of evolve, and, and honestly, I think I was a little bit concerned that, you know, the art game director is our public face. And we actually gave him, you know, some media training. And Stig actually asked, asking people, he says, you know, honestly, I, I don't want to think about all this stuff. I just want to be myself. Is that okay? And uh, they said, you know what? Absolutely. That looks good. Oh, wow. So that's how tall Kratos is. He's probably closer to the size of this guy. Will is uh, our, our stand in Kratos when Kratos isn't here. I'm about as close as you can get. We picked the venue and the location for the spot, and we brought all the media here. We have something like 60 people here from the media. I can't wait for them to see the actual gameplay. These guys are going to be thrilled. Love Kratos. Kratos is hot. He 
nice to see if he ends up a god or destroying Olympus. I do love the violence as well. You know, the women are very beautiful in the game as well. I can't wait to see what new characters they've brought to us, what new enemies, and I'm really excited. I also want the sizzle, you know? Maybe we can just focus it in a little bit more. We can play with that a little bit. Yeah. The development team has worked so hard on this project, so it's really fun to see when all their hard work comes to fruition. I'm going to get through the first couple slides up here, and then I'm going to start to walk around. Nobody has seen the gameplay outside of our studio, so this is going to be the first time. I want to get this over with. <laughs> I'm nervous, but I'm also excited about this. I think we've got something really cool to show. I'm looking forward to seeing people's reactions. Can we play it? This is our first big kind of press thing. There's definitely some nerves with that. Anxious, I'm definitely anxious. The best thing that could happen today is people think it's awesome. You know, it totally kicks ass. The worst thing that could happen today is that people just flat out think it sucks. I don't think that's gonna happen, but you never know with these media people. What is the vision for God of War 3? We want to define this generation with this game. We're going to take a close look at him. I'll talk about some of the, the features that we're using on him. Here he is. We've got blended normal maps on him right now, so you can see the realistic muscle flexing. I, I, I would imagine that we've got one of the most advanced systems for that in the industry right now. The battle's in full swing. The god Helios is in battle with a massive titan. And Kratos is going to launch into battle and start doing some damage on the grunts here. Now, Todd can easily just grab one of the grunts by pressing circle. And if he continues pressing circle, he can beat the crap out of him. But if he presses triangle, then he can rip him apart. If he presses X, then he can throw him. And one more move, Square uses it as a battering ram. And then he can take it, mash circle, smash his head against the wall. And all these moves are interchangeable. Meet our latest AI, the Chimera. Part snake, part goat, part lion. Todd has just unleashed the Cestus on him, and you can see it's a brawling weapon. Now, the way the Chimera works is a three-stage enemy. First, you fight the snake stage, and then it changes its stance, and you fight the lion stage. We're really having fun with gore on this game. Entering the Cyclops. Every action that the Cyclops makes is a direct reaction from the pain that Kratos is inflicting on him. Well, that's our newest upgrade, the Helios head. It could be used to reveal secrets. Todd has now found the door of Eos. Another thing the Helios head can be used as is a lantern in darkened areas. This is our newest form of travel in God of War, Icarus Ascension. Todd now has full flight controls over Kratos and basically dodging gameplay. That's it. Phenomenal. I mean, like, I thought that I, I had a concept of what it would be like, but this pretty much blew everything completely out of the water. We're putting a lot into this game. I said I think this game needs to be a defining game for this generation, and I truly believe it will be. I can't comment on what the future holds for the series because, you know, I'm focused on God of War 3 right now, but this is, this is, God of War is, this is it. This is the end of the story. We got a lot of work to do, so there's no time for relaxing, that's for sure. E3 is obviously a big thing. We got to get this playable to the public, what we just showed on the demo here. We're in pretty good shape for that, but we got to get the game done. But we still got a lot of work left to do. But right now for E3, pretty nervous about it. Nervous, I mean, think nervous isn't a bad thing. You know, you should be nervous. Your, your nerves should be on edge or else you're not gonna get the thing done right. 
it's kind of ironic that you know, most people would have been happy with the reaction for the press demo and we were kind of like, uh, we could have done better. We've undertaken to basically change the rendering uh, path between February and E3 to make it look much prettier and much more next gen. We have this amazing capacity to never know when to stop. Hopefully it'll all come together. I think it will. It's looking very nice. We definitely know how to pressure ourselves. This team sets the bar really high. We could settle for a lot less and probably be a lot closer to being done, but uh, with this group, they're That'd never satisfied. <laughs> yeah, We never do things the easy way. Personally, I'm worried, but then I think it's good that I'm worried because that forces me to actually get this shit done. Yeah, there's definitely pressure. Self-created pressure and then pressure from other departments just to get everything done. We're all just trying to do our best. I think the most pressure we get is from ourselves. Every team is always looking at the other team's work and, and commenting and critiquing. Yes. So we're really pushing each other the most, I think. It's, it's a lot of back and forth. Nothing moves because we're going to need to take every freaking second to make sure it's stable and we are at frame rate. Uh, so, stay with that. You want to just. Uh... The dead soldiers on the ground aren't in the poses? Nope, and they don't have blood streaks and stuff in here. Tyler, you're doing blood streaks. Too. All right, so we need a book over here then. The inactive mode would look like kind of like it does right now with the book shot, the active mode, the book would open up and we have to look like a glow around it. We have to open and close the book. Yeah, there's a bug for it. I wish I would have known that when we built it, because we didn't build it to open and close. Wait, you need the book to open and close? Yeah. There's no limit to good ideas, but there is a limit to how many of those good ideas that you can actually implement. And even if you make decisions and you make progress on things, it doesn't mean that you can get all those things done. We need to be able to tell people this thing is active now. Can we remove it for E3? Are you serious? No, I'm not. I mean, there's a lot of other shit here to get done besides getting a book to have in an act active state. Let's, let's, let's say we don't do the open and, and close for E3. It would just have a glow effect and a light that comes with it, and so that's it. Do we just put a sparkle on it then? Absolutely have any compromise for the schedule right now. I have to trust production, and I have to trust the fact that they're telling me that we can't get things done. So I feel like there's little things that have been compromised. I don't know that the player's going to necessarily miss them, but I sure am. It's part of making games. You don't always get what you want. This seems like harder than the last time I played it. We'd have to keep in mind that somebody from the street is going to be playing those harpies. And I don't know, the way it looks right now, on three tries, people will throw down the controller. The stuff we just went through, pretty rough. It's a little frustrating from the respect that it's been kind of at this state for a long time now kind of wondering when it's going to get fixed. Um, the struggle or if the challenge. If this week, we're screwed. This is sprint week, meaning uh, we're making a big push this week to get a lot of work done and uh, make some headway going into E3. As far as crunch goes, we're not going to call it crunch anymore. We're going to call it a sprint, and then everything will be fine. So as <laughs> so long as we do change that. Change the name, it'll all be fine. Tonight's the first night of Oh, uh, crunch. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so... We don't like the euphemism yeah. sprint. Fuck. I hate crunch. It sucks. Right now, I'm creating a new build, and hopefully that will enable the rest of the studio to then continue working on the awesome content that they're creating for E3. They're definitely waiting on me. <laughs> definitely. As far as my end, I feel I'm okay, but then at the same time, I kind of feel like I'm waiting on technology a little bit to kind of come online. We just have a ton of bugs to fix. We're getting new technology right now, and the lighting's kind of broken, fog's kind of broken, so we're just trying to kind of survive, fix all our bugs, and get all of our tech in place so we can get this thing done. You're sprinting now. Yeah. Tonight's the first time the team has worked together as one, and there's a certain kind of level of excitement that goes into it and dread because we're still working, but it's a fun group to be with, and we're trying to get stuff done. You know, we can only do so much, right? And we'll just try to do as much as possible, as quickly as possible, and that's it. Um, hopefully we end up with something pretty cool, though. This is the biggest E3 we'll ever have. Everybody wants to still see if uh, Santa Monica still has it.
Last two weeks have been very, very intense. I actually got here this morning, a half hour before the shrine actually opened to, to deliver live code for what we're playing this morning. I didn't have that code until yesterday afternoon. The Sony press conference is their big moment. You know, two hours to like show all the new stuff they have and it's gonna be broadcast on live TV and web. And uh, we're gonna end the show with God of War 3. Anytime that you go first or last, if you open the show or close the show, it's an honor. I guess we're happy that, that Sony uh, seems so committed to, to our game. It's nice that all of our hard work over the last seven years, really, because that's how long we've been working on the God of War series in total, is really getting the, the reception that, that it seems to be getting. We're real excited that we're closing the press conference. It's a great opportunity, it's a great way to end. We're gonna be live on stage playing real live code. So, nerves are definitely high. Like a lot of jitters. Stig's gonna be talking and I'm gonna be playing on, on stage, so a little stressful. Gotta take the edge off a little bit. Headlining scares the shit out of me. <laughs> you know, uh, I've never done something this big, you know, standing in front of 2,000 people or however many it is. This is one of the most eagerly anticipated games of this generation. I'd like to invite Stig Askerson to the stage to show you the first few minutes of the jaw-dropping God of War 3. We at Sony Santa Monica Studios are excited to be able to present this live demo of God of War 3. God of War 3 is the final chapter in our fantasy trilogy based on the dark side of Greek mythology. Now our design director, Todd Happy, will take point on the controls and we'll get into our demo. I'm really anxious, I'm really excited. This is a really important moment for the team. It's important for the game. I hope that we make the impression that we, you know, we always strive for. that E3 is back. It's pretty exciting. It's been a couple of years since there was a, a really decent sized E3. It's always exciting to have your game here. This is what we work for. E3 is like Christmas. We've got 12 kiosks set up with God of War. We had a great time last night setting it up. It was actually, we got there. The Sony booth was relatively quiet. All the games were up and running, but there weren't a lot of people playing anything. We uh, started loading in the God of War and people started lining up behind me to play it. I had somebody tell me today, one of the producers of another product told me when we got in there and loaded our code, all work stopped at the Sony booth so they come play our product. Hugely flattering, big kudos to the team. Got chills just having that whole experience, it was awesome.
so drained and put so much energy into it that all this all this energy coming from, from the outside just builds us back up and gives us that ability to finish the game. E3s was a huge milestone for us. A lot of publicity, a lot of great feedback and great exposure. E3 was awesome. I have to say it went very well. I was seeing all the fans and watching everybody play totally put us in a different mindset coming back from that. You really get locked up and don't really see people's reactions working on something for so long and going and seeing people line up for your game, that's more than you could ever want, you know? It just kind of invigorates the whole team into coming back and working on something and wanting to put your heart into it and making it even better. I think we did a good job with it with, at E3. Uh, and that shouldn't be our high point. That should be like our midpoint. Alpha is when the whole game from start to finish needs to be in one bag. It can have placeholder assets, but you can fly basically through the whole game or walk through the whole game and everything's represented in approximately the way that it will ship with. Yeah, so ideally by Alpha we shouldn't go, oh hey, we need that extra bad guy or hey, we're going to add a new boss. All Which we've that. done on other games, so. But ideally on God of War 3, you know, Alpha will be, okay, all of our pieces are in. And then after Alpha becomes Beta, and Beta is basically our lock. I want to make sure that when I'm playing the game, I'm ha I've got a smile on my face. You know, I've played God of War for the last six or seven years of my life now. As long as I've got a smile on my face, I think there's a good chance that that's going to translate over to the fans. If you kind of take a look at this here, you can see this character that's the size of the Sears Tower, roughly. It's about 1,500 feet tall. It's a different kind of boss battle. Kronos is more than Gaia, is, is more fully alive, and you're more fighting on a character that's moving around. So this has been very tedious and challenging and time-consuming to put this together, but I think at the end it'll be definitely be worth it, and people will feel like they're playing something they never played before. Kronos will actually like thrust his hands forward into his scrape and leave his fingers there so that you can actually attack his fingernails. We'll have a breakable on the fingernail, and then the fingernail will bring up like a circle prompt. You'll grab onto that and in the CS move, and then basically do a struggle and then rip it out, and you know, it'll be kind of a gory, cool, memorable moment. We actually want to make this awesome. We want to make this gameplay super exciting. It's going to be everything people expect from what the Titan fight should be. What are the big tech issues, Chris, that you need support on? It's the only big tech issue we need support on at the moment is the issue with the collision. The more static you can get him, the more precision you will get in your CS move. The problem is that since it's a skin, it's a skin collision, the skin itself is not necessary, is not just a non-deformable object that you can rely on to not have change from one room to the other. That's the biggest issue we can have. What we're doing hasn't really ever been done before, and so a lot of what we're running into are, are issues with trying to make it as exciting as possible, but working within the technical constraints that we have and in the time frame that we have. I would say that the rewrite of skin collision is turning into a very unrealistic proposition to get it finished before out. Time is the biggest fun killer usually is as far as developing. It's where you come up with the most exciting scenarios, but do we have the time to put it together? For the reason that I will need to take a look at what is going on and what's fixable and what is not and what we will have to design around. With Kronos, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts, and when you see it all together in the finished product with all the polish, I think it's gonna be one of the most memorable experiences in gaming history. I really, that's how I feel about it. I know it's gonna be like that. The murderer of Gaia enters my tomb, Kronos! I know it was you who killed her, Spartan. Who else could? About a month back, maybe six weeks back after Alpha, we were looking at the end of the game and we felt like there was a lot of fighting and it didn't really tie into the story. We had a couple brainstorming meetings and we came up with this idea that it would be really cool to go inside Chris' head. Because that's where the struggle is really taking place. The story's been really never done until the game ships. And we're always tweaking it and modifying it. But I really like working on the story. Chris is going to have this emotional story. Struggle inside of his head. 
and you know, really the object of this game is he has to realize that he has hope inside of him, the power of hope. And that's what he originally got when he opened up Pandora's box. He didn't get the evil things, he got the good things. And I think it's gonna be a really, really fitting end to the trilogy. Keep in mind, you know, we're, we're very close to beta here, and uh, this is the big stretch. We really, really, really gotta be zipping things up. Let's do it. That's all I got. That's all I got. This is the third Halloween, I think for many it's probably a big relief. We're less than three months away from being done. It's been two plus years. It's been an incredible journey. We've overcome so many pitfalls along the way with chains of personnel, project redesigns. Despite all that, we've, we've managed to continue to elevate and continue to push ourselves and continue to make the best products we as a team can do. And I think God of War 3 is living up to that. To complete the third one is pretty amazing. We always tried to, to hit the highest mark we possibly could, and I think we've done it once again with this one. So it's, we're gonna have to wait and see what the fans think, but I, I have really, really high hopes. Completing a trilogy is something I never did in my life, you know, and completing something like this is very special, you know, something that means a lot to me. Sentimental moment. <laughs> This is truly one of the best teams I've ever worked with. I mean, across the board. I've worked with teams that were really strong on the art side, or really strong on design, or really strong on technology, but this is the only team I've worked with that fires on all cylinders. The team faced a lot of challenges. The interesting thing is that this team has always faced challenges, and it sounds kind of cliche, but they're really good at facing challenges. Yeah, I agree 100%. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I mean, we've discussed a lot. Obviously, we've gone through a lot of different changes, and um, and the team always, I mean, you they can step put it any better, but they always they always rise to the challenge. We really sat down and like focused what we wanted to you know make good, and whatever wasn't working, we just kind of threw out the door and said, "This is what we want," and that's what everybody focused on and made good. Fans are going to be blown away. We're still getting surprised as far as how good things look. The game's awesome. It's going to be good. I've been working with Kratos almost seven years. <laughs> I've learned a lot. He's taught me a lot. We've had some good times, but it's time for him to go to bed for a little while. <laughs>
The role of a combat designer on God of War 3 is a complex role. basically has anything to do with characters in the game. Any character you see moving in the game, attacking, fighting, are generally implemented by the combat designer. And then, of course, Kratos. What his platforming elements are going to be, what his new combat moves are going to be, what weapons he's going to use, how he's, how he's going to use them, how he walks, everything. I'm here with uh, Jason McDonald, who's a senior combat designer in God of War 3. And uh, we're just talking about the new features that we have in the game and what we're trying to add to the God of War franchise. Well, we've got some of Kratos' items in. Um, he can grab a head and he can light stuff up. Now that we can play with lighting in God of War 3, we can make the entire room dark, have the enemies that are attacking you in the dark, can't be seen. And when you light them up with the head, they light up for a, a limited amount of time, so you can attack them while you can see them, but then they are constantly disappearing. You get to parts where it's completely pitch dark and you hear the guys scream in the background. You use the Helios head to you know, find out where they are. The strategy gameplay, the combat side of it, turns into you have to keep these guys lit to be able to hit them, otherwise you get screwed and they just destroy you in the dark. So. De definitely something we couldn't do before, just because we didn't have dynamic lighting to the extent that we have it now. So. We got the, the combat grapple in. We tried the grapple stuff in God of War 2, but um, since we were limited on memory and animations and things like that, we just couldn't uh, couldn't do it. and couldn't. Uh, if we couldn't do it well, then we weren't going to do it at all, so we just didn't do it. But now, now we have more space, more memory. Kratos is a very strong character, so when he grapples an enemy, he kind of just charges right in and plows through everybody. So the grapple system is exactly like that. You can launch somebody in the air and you grapple them and you ply yourself right into the air, right into them. If there's a crowd of enemies, you'll ply yourself through all of them. Hey, I'm at Brian Yu's desk here. He's a senior combat designer on God of War 3. For this particular boss, which is a huge scorpion, you want to make sure the presence is there and the player will feel the power of the attack. Usually for attacks for boss character, you want them to be really recognizable so the player know it's coming because if the player cannot recognize the move and you know react in time, they get hit, you know, because it's boss character, you will take a lot of damage. So it's it's not fun, you, you know, if you don't see the attack coming, you're being hit. So that's something that we try to work really hard on. So. I'm here with Jason DeHarris, a combat designer on God of War 3. And uh, we're just looking over some of the writable stuff that's early in development. So how do you think it's going? It's all right in terms of Kratos. He still wants to kill this, this beast that's in his way to his ultimate goal. So he doesn't, it's not really his, his friend. So he's not really telling it to attack. He's just trying to kill it. And then the, the indirectness of that is the Cyclops reacting to, to his pain pretty much. But then there's a the challenge of making it feel responsive as well. So I guess it's kind of disguising that responsiveness with the, the pain reaction. So even the pain reaction is, is really a hit, actually. Since you can see, we got a bunch of grunts on screen right now. And um, when you're fighting all these grunts, like taking them on, you know, doing a special move or, or, you know, grabbing each one and killing them, that can be kind of slow. This will be an awesome tool for, like, you see the Cyclops in there, and you're just like, I want to get after the Cyclops so I can. I can jump on his back and do tons of damage and kill these guys quicker. But just like any other feature, you know, we have to prove that it's going to be fun and good. And, um, if it's not, we got to get rid of it because everything has to be fun. Before the age of the twilight set upon the gods, a legend rose to claim his place among them. And even though Kratos sat on the throne as the new god of war, he was haunted by visions of his family, a family he himself murdered. But the hands of death could not defeat him, 
The sisters of fate could not control him. And on this day, the man, the legend, Kratos, will have his revenge.